All right, so we're going to be taking a look at some geometric probability here. Now, I got to tell you that the geometric probability part of this is, I find, the most interesting. And uh, because, you know, we have some, some probability using area models, but also we have some other probability that doesn't really, you don't, you're not really going to think, oh, this is definitely geometric. Um, you have some probability that, that you can... Uh, model geometrically and it makes it so much easier. Now before we get started, I want you to start with going through the little quiz on 9-5. Uh, Stop the video, do it, restart it when you're done. Now we're back. All right. So f describe the effects of each change on the area of a given figure. Well, if we increase the base of the rectangle by 8, just the base of the rectangle by 8, well, what's going to happen to the area? Well, the first question I have is, um, do we multiply the height by 8? But no, it just says the base. So if I multiply the base by 8, that means that the overall area will also be multiplied by 8. It'll be 8 times bigger. Well, if the now let's look at number 2. The radius of a circle is tripled. Well, that means that this circle, this radius, is now 3 times longer. And now we have a little Pac-Man type thing that ate the other Pac-Man, but whatever. Um, that means the whole area has been multiplied uh, by, by more than just 3, doesn't it, right? I mean, it's clearly... Not, not three times bigger. It's more than that. And so if we're looking at the uh, area of a triangle, or of a circle, sorry, pi r squared, we're squaring this radius. Well, three squared is nine, so the area is nine times bigger. All right, number three. A square has an area of 20, 49 square centimeters. The area is quadrupled. What happens to the side lengths? Well, if the area is quadrupled, we have to you know, work backwards. We, we know that the area is the scale factor squared times bigger. So if, what's the square root of quadrupled? Well, the square root of 4 is 2. So the side lengths will be 2 times larger. OK. So now that we have our review from yesterday's work done, let's take a look at the first question. A, a point is chosen at random along PS. And so we have line segment PS. And uh, we are to find the probability of each of these events. We want to know what is the probability that the point that we chose at random is on RS, this part right here. Well, this distance here is 5. So we have five possible units uh, that it'll land on. And we have a total of 25. So we have 5 out of 25, which is equal to a one-fifth chance of this happening. What are the odds that the point is not on QR? Well, if it's not on QR, that means it's either on RS or it's on PQ. And this is a distance of 5 plus 7, which is 12. The whole line segment hasn't changed. It's still 25 units long. So 12 out of 25 is 12 out of 25. They don't share a factor. Finally, what are the odds that the point is on PQ or QR? So in this case, we're looking at this segment right here. Well, that's 20 of the possible 25, which is equal to 4 fifths. So that is a one-dimensional probability problem. And well, how, how does that uh, expand to example number two? A pedestrian sign at a crosswalk will show a walk for 45 seconds. Don't walk for 60 
and it'll blink for 10 seconds when flashing. What is the probability that the sign will show walk when you arrive at the intersection? Well, I can't help but think about what we did right over here. And so the cycle, um, I know in science you've been talking about waves and periods. So the period of this whole thing is going to be 60 plus 10, that's 70 plus 45. So that's 70 plus that's 105 seconds. So we have a total of 105 seconds of this uh, stoplight turning on and off. And for 45 seconds of it, it says walk. Then we have a 10 second where it's flashing, put F for flashing. And then for 60 seconds, it says don't walk. And we are to figure out the probability that when we get there, it'll say walk. Well, looking at this model here, we have 40, one different color. We have 45 seconds that says walk. So that's 45 out of a possible 105. Well, five goes in, I just threw my pen. I blame it on the fact that they've turned off the heat and now the school building is wicked cold while I'm doing this. I guess that's, that's my reward for being here. So 9 over 21. Well, 3 goes into both of them. So that's 3 sevenths chance that it will show walk. Oops. Oh, because I'm an idiot. Hold on a second. I did it right. I'm just, so what is 105 divided by 5? It's 21. OK, so hold on a second. I am an idiot because I got stuck with the 60 seconds. That's 70 seconds. Ah, please forgive me. So that makes that 115, 115, that's 23. OK, sorry. So I can't reduce it. So nine, and so uh, we have a nine twenty thirds chance that it'll say walk. My goodness, um, but I don't know what that really means a whole lot. Nine twenty thirds. So I'm going to go nine divided by twenty three. Okay, so almost a almost a forty percent chance, or a thirty nine percent chance that I'll get there when it already says walk. OK, B. If you stop at the intersection 10 times, how many times would you have to wait more than 40 seconds? Hint, make a diagram. All right. So, um, oh boy. Well, let's, let's take the advice. Let's make the diagram. This time, we're going to make it right. So here we go. We have 45 seconds where it's walk. We have 10 seconds where it's flashing. And now we have 70 seconds where we're not supposed to walk. All right. So, and it says if you stop at the intersection 10 times, how many times did you have to wait more than 40 seconds? All right, so I think we can safely assume that if we get here, uh, we're not going to wait at all. I don't know. I mean, the flashing part is a little open to interpretation. I realize that. Um, but. Second. Okay, so we can definitely make that assumption. At this point, we're just going. Hopefully, hopefully it's not right here, right? But we're just going. So if we're waiting for 40 seconds, that means that we're looking for a point that's sort of more than 40 seconds. And if, if it changes right here and goes back here, that means that right about here, 
So that's 40, and this is 30. Uh, if we stop in this 30 second uh, window, we're going to have to wait for more than 40 seconds. So, um, so that's 30 out of 115 seconds. So we're going to go 30 divided by 115. All right. So that's about 26% of the time. And we want to know. If we do it 10 times, how many would we expect to do it? Or, oh. Well, I would expect probably three, two to three times, because it's 26% of the time. That's rounding up to three out of 10, because this time is 10, this is 2.6, round to three. All right. All right. I double checked. I've done it right. Okay. I guess today is getting better. The sun is out. There's no one in the school except for me. Life is good. All right. So what are the odds of landing on section A? Okay. Well, we have a pie chart. Section A has 108 degrees. We're going to assume that's right smack dab in the middle. And so we have a 108 degrees of section A goodness out of a possible 360. So um, I can reduce this, right? So 4 goes into both of them. So 108 divided by 4, 27 divided by 4 is 90. 9 goes into both of them. So it's 3 tenths of the time. So the odds that we will land in section A should be 3 tenths. OK, great. Um, what are the odds of section B or D? So B or D. So B is 60, D is at, so that's 112 out of 360. 4 conveniently goes into both of them again. So that's 28 out of 90. 2 goes into both of those. So that is 14. 14 out of 45. I don't think, oh, nope. And so those are the odds of landing on those two sections. And then not landing on C. Well, C is 140. 360 minus 140 is going to be 210. So 210 out of 36. And again, we're going to reduce. So that's 21 over 36. Um, 3 goes into both of them. So that's 7 twelfths of the time. All right. So at this point, I would like you to give a shot for uh, uh, um, this piece right here. After I move my uh, bar, you'll be able to see it. And I will post uh, some way for you to check the answers. All right. This is the last section in this unit. And so the next one will be a review of the chapter.